Hey everyone, uh, good day or good night. So at this moment, I would like to share maybe some trick or a script that can do a prediction for temperature resolution lens surface temperature. Because you know, I think the highest uh, open source data available for lens surface temperature is uh, from Lancet, I think, 3200 meters which uh, let's say you want to do, we want a higher one like from Sentinel, uh, the they exist. I mean, they exist, but like in lower solution, I think for Sentinel-3. But now I'm going to show you how to, let's say, predict, I mean, what will be the temperature of Sentinel-2 lens super temperature look like, you know? But again, it's prediction, so take it with a grain of salt. So what I did is I have a script. So I'm using uh, Landsat 9, Landsat 8 uh, for their temperature as a label. But I'm using Sentinel-2, uh, also its indices and other parameters as the predictors. So what I'm doing in script is that I decide the region of interest first. So I decide just this area, which is a uh, small part of uh, West Sumatra. So it's one of the uh, province in Sumatra Island. So it's quite a big one. They have a great history. I mean, if you know uh, Indonesian food rendang, it's come from this region. So yeah, it should be famous. Also, my getting my great grand grandparents from here too. I think, yeah, I can't forget. <laughs> uh, so I just said the dates. I'm also using only two months. So from uh, 2024, month six and month seven. So uh, June and July. Why they limited? So that we don't have the, a lot of data to pre-process. You know, so we make sure that's really stable. And what's predictor? So I generate some uh, bands, of course, band two, blue, green, red, near infrared. So I one and two, also a bunch of indices. Also, I'm using uh, uh, SRTM, okay, elevation metal to help with because there is a correlation between elevation and, you know, temperatures. So that's the one I want trying to copy, I'll say. And the last thing that we can do is that uh, uh, there's a variable called wetness, greenness, and dryness. It's basically a focal operation. So dryness is, uh, let's say, urban area or bare, bare land. Uh, make a focal correction around it, you know, calculate the mean around the neighbor. Greenness is for vegetation and when it's for, you know, water object. And I also said the how many prediction predictors they are finally used. Because I'm not going to use every one of them because if they have the same value or the same pattern, why we use it, okay? So we need to limit that. So I'm going to use only three. But there's uh, there's a method how I how I choose the best three, basically. But will show you later. Then I'm gonna set the train ratio. Uh, so basically, how many sample that I'm gonna use as a training? Because I'm using machine learning method here. I'm gonna split between train and testing. So that I'm trying to do. Okay, what else? Uh, okay. Uh, next is that uh, the filtration. So I filter the image using a mega filter object to help with filter for the next step. So filter lots of data, get a mean, do cloud masking. Then also the same for sample too. So this result, uh, I'll show you the Sentinel-2, eh, the Lancet one is quite here because we get a mass sum area, is that? The Sentinel-2 for image, uh, we have it using near infrared sort of infrared uh, composite. Then what I have is that uh, uh, I generate indices, you know, like NDVI, you know, NDMI, I don't use NDVI here, no, no. <laughs> because in tropical area, NDVI doesn't work as good as, let's say, in temperate zone, so uh, think about it. Ah. So it's NDMI, okay, let's take a look, yeah. NBR, no mass burn ratio, no burn ratio two, NDWI, and WI is for water, it's very good. Uh, I'm gonna use that better. Uh, and then elevation data too. Also, yeah, remember, uh, for elevation data, I'm gonna use it also as a certification class. So I'm using certification sampling, so, uh, so make sure that for each classes, I get the same amount of samples. Uh, why use elevation? Of course, uh, because there's different height, usually have different distribution of values. So make sure that it's well counted. How I defined it, uh, I made it up, <laughs> but it's, I think, just my experience. Okay. Then, of course, the indices for, I told you about the, the one, though, is wetness, greenness, and dryness. Basically, wetness is from water, water watery object. It doesn't have to be water, like maybe it's swarm too. Green is for vegetation, and dry is you know bare line or urban. Then what I do is I do focal mean, uh, just one one neighbor, but do it ten times, you know, a lot more. Then the purpose index just help us, basically to decide if area is lower or higher based on their neighbors. 
the slope, of course. Yeah, then I put in one features, then I extract the, extract the sample, just ratified the sample. Then, so yeah, after I get sample, what I do is that I'm gonna calculate the, uh, what do you call it, the correlation table or chart. <laughs> So basically, I show you uh, the correlation between each of the features, you know, compared to the LST. I show that some value is better than the other. For example, like dryness is really half R square with LST. And slope too, uh, greenness, elevation, band 4. Oh, I don't know red band is really correlated. <laughs> so yeah, so I take only top 6 of, this, of that. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a correlation matrix between them, you know. Comparison between this this these top six variables and as a result Using mean and median average what's the average value of this correlation matrix? What I want is that I want to find the the variables that would, with the fewest correlation between them, you know So I don't use the same uh, look like variable one, you know, so only one so for example I always dryness So from this I use only dryness elevation and band four I think So I think they are, they are the lowest uh, what I called uh, correlation matrix basically so only dryness band 4 and elevation that's how I decided or maybe this is the correlation matrix I meant put some here you know the normal but I don't use color just numbers but I translate it into like an average you know that's what I do uh, next is that oh maybe I'm just gonna show you this matrix so this is the top three one I told you about the, the final one so LST and dryness to this relationship LST and band 4 and LST and elevation so you have this kind of relationship right you can see right what, what I why I decided to do this is that you can see that it's really different which is good you know because you don't want the same variables on one models just uh, you know just some they're actually really different that what you want okay next we're gonna next of course just like uh, what we do uh, I'm just gonna do split split the sample you know split into training testing using 0 0.7 then I gonna Trainer model is you run a forest regression. I know it was used too much, but it's work. Why not? Then what's next to do is that hey, maybe I'm gonna show you uh, the the one I the one I make about before you know about the wetness one. Just with a bit, <laughs> it's basically you know. So basically, it's the like the distance between water and not and greenness too. Wait a second, yeah. <laughs> then dryness. Dryness is basically how dry the area is because I assume that urban and uh, better than is dry, you know. This is TPI. Yeah, you know. so red is higher than than neighbor. White is not so different, and blue is lower. So it's a valley basically, and a slope. Of course, you know, slope is right. Okay, then I train it. Uh, I get the relative important data. So which is the most important value? Which is I think for here, it's not quite different. But for dryness elevation, have the same range. Then I get the accuracy uh, using R square and main absolute error. So I get about you know 0 0.84, which is really good, I think, for predicting uh the surface at least using cross correlation. I mean if you need you still need like field data if you want to do really good models, but this thing works, you know. And I think this is the the one-to-one -one plot, you know. So basically how we differentiate it, you know. The differentiation of the class, you know, I mean, if it goes to the red line, I mean, the model is really good, you know, performing really well, not really underestimate or overestimate, just red line. If it's below, it's really underestimate. If it's higher, it's overestimate. So, I think this line is quite good, you know. They are really distributed classes, you know. Okay. Then I apply it, I apply it to the features that I made, and this is the result. Ta da! But of course, if you zoom in, uh, it looks looks so different than let's say you zoom out because the projection is not set yet, you know. And I, if I want to apply that, it's gonna destroy the results sometime. Uh, not destroy, but make it slower. So I suggest that uh, if you want to see the actual resolution, you need to export it first. Export it, then you can see the actual result. Because if you do this, the value gonna be changed every time you zoom in. <laughs> because uh, it's look operation that we did before, like the uh, wetness, greenness, and dryness because they use a focal operation which there's no resolution or projection yet. So we want to get the, re the actual result. You have to do a projection. Yeah. So you see the city here. Uh, this city of Padang. Uh, it's really dry. It's really hot. At least it seems from this data. If you compare to the Landsat image, let's see. Eh, it looks close, right? 
is the sentinel tool landsat Ooh, you should say squared low this is sentinel landsat sentinel landsat sentinel you see it's look light right it's closely like and you see the vegetation is have a lower uh, lst water is having this quite normal lst i would say this is the sentinel tool image you also can compare that you know really urban area has a, you know uh really high lst basically and wet area low and mountain is lower even so yeah that's land surface temperature for you guys uh and okay i also make a histogram uh basically to see the distribution of the value of land surface temperature in this region as you can see that this position is quite even although i think for pixel size uh, I think the prediction is lower, I guess, the number of one. I think because of the how I can, uh, I can count the histogram. But the distribution is quite the same, so so yeah, <laughs> of course. Of course, uh, this model can be much more improved. You can use radar or something else. But for me, it's, this thing works. So you guys like to try? Sure, I'll share it in the, uh, my posts. And Okay, that's from me. Thanks for, you know, look at this, try it, you know. It could benefit you. <laughs> See ya. Good day.